from Hollywood to our viewers all around the world. Thank you for watching. Thank you for having me. It is a great honor to be invited back for a second time. It's a great honor to be here among so many talented women and men. Congratulations to all of you. You made it. We're at the screening room. Some of you will be going home tonight with an award from me. What could be better than that? Nothing, right? So, oh, I do want to mention. And that right there is the sound of you not having to hear Jimmy Kimmel anymore. Isn't it glorious? Now, the Oscars are tonight, and I support Matt Damon, even though he is sadly not nominated for Best Actor, even though he deserves it. Anyways, for us cinephiles, Oscars are like Christmas morning come early. We're technically a month late, depending on how you look at it. Now, this award show is the cream of the crop, comes with the best performances, really great monologues. The studios put a lot of money into this because winning an award means they can really beef up all their trailers and marketing for all their new movies with these added taglines like Golden Globe nominee and Academy Award winning director, etc, etc. It's all a big business and so is the process of campaigning for these awards. If you want a deep dive on the campaign process, strongly suggest watching Adam Ruins Everything. Uh, he has an episode that covers the entire thing. You can find it on YouTube. And on that note, let's cue the intro. My name is Sadu, and welcome to the screening room. For a show with such enormous weight, you really think that they'd have a better system. But no, they have around 7,000 members, and all of them are members for life. Only people who have been kicked out are like Harvey Weinstein, Kevin Spacey, to name a few. And, like, I don't understand why they only pick five to six nominees in most categories, and they do nine to ten for Best Picture, uh, which is good. But... Why don't they just do like 8 or 10 for each category anyways? People already make their top 10 lists and like it's kind of a thing, right? And they're very sim it's very simple to do that. And why not nominate more movies? Like people will just go out to see more movies and more movies that they end up seeing will get nominated, so maybe they'll actually watch the awards shows because the ratings have been going down year after year after year. And maybe that has something to do with the host, but also because of like how selective they are with the movies. Like, if they were more open, they might get more viewership. And I don't think the Academy Award is way too prestigious of an award to do something like that. Uh, and with the glaring in inconsistencies in the system, I don't think that it would uh, be a detriment at all. So, with all that in mind, I think I'd like to propose my own rating system and take you through what I think were the best movies of the year, as well as what I think will win some of the most coveted awards at the Oscars tonight. And to do this, I'm going to take a page out of the Golden Globes book. While the Golden Globes have a much smaller pool of voters, less diverse, only 90 members of the Hollywood Foreign Press, I think they're onto something when they divide the categories into drama and musical comedy. I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take it a step further. Uh, while I do think The Martian was not a comedy, I am definitely not opposed to that movie winning an award. The fact of the matter is we have a ton of movies and they span a variety of genres. So why not make use of them? So here's how it's going to go down. I have categories for action slash superhero, horror slash suspense slash thrillers, romance, war movies, drama slash biopics, and comedies. Okay? So that basically covers most of these movies. I'm not doing documentaries or shorts. 
Beginning with the most vanilla of all the categories, the one that you've probably seen because they make the most amount of money, the action slash superhero genre. At number five, we have Spider-Man Far From Home, the second in Tom Holland's Marvel Cinematic Universe series with Jake Gyllenhaal as the villain Mysterio, which is kind of the only reason I went to go see this movie. And uh, after that, it's pretty forgettable in my opinion uh it's some pretty okay action scenes but other than that not not too great in my opinion and at number four we have shazam now i love shazam i i straight up loved 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 this movie this movie had so much heart. This movie, I actually felt for both all these characters. I actually cared about it. It was a very silly movie, but I could look past all the silliness and I actually cared about these characters. And it was pretty different from your normal superhero movie because of the foster family aspect to it. So this is one of those really good movies that you should definitely check out. Um, it's on HBO now. In the number three spot, we have M. Night Shyamalan's Glass. Now, this movie came out in January, got some really bad reviews, and then it just kind of disappeared off of everyone's radar because they were like, oh, it's a disappointing finale to this series. While I will admit there are some points to it that are disappointing, I do think this is one of the most interesting worlds that any filmmaker has created to represent superheroes. To show superheroes in this way, I thought it was extremely cool, extremely different, and I honestly loved it. I really liked Split, Unbreakable, and I felt like this was a worthy sequel and an interesting cap end to the trilogy. It was kind of like an answer to the Marvel Cinematic Universe and all these franchises. In the number two spot, we have Keanu Reeves. Keanu Reeves had a Keanu Sans this year, and it was amazing. John Wick 3 is one of the best pure action movies I have ever seen, and it goes up there as one of, with one of the greats like Mad Max Fury Road. Just pure thrill ride from start to finish, and never a dull moment, always on the edge of your seat, and very intense bloody, violent, brutal, everything you want turned up to 11. Do not miss this one. It's also on HBO. Go check it out. And last but not least, I'm sure you definitely didn't see this coming. Avengers Endgame, just a little movie that's kind of the biggest movie ever at this point. I still like Avatar more than this, but Avengers Endgame made a lot of money. You already know. It's great. You've probably already seen it like five times already. Who knows? I was going to go straight from action into horror, but I decided to go around and stop at romance on the way there. This movie's a masterpiece, like hands down. I find it really weird that when we live in a time where people kind of try to outwoke one another like it's some sort of competition, these LGBTQ stories are still very niche and they rarely get their time in the spotlight. Like for every call me by your name, there's so many other like straight romances. And honestly, it's hard to find this movie because it hasn't <laughs> hasn't come out in the United States. Kind of have to watch it illegally. But you owe it to yourself to watch this. It is so emotionally devastating. It's heart-wrenchingly beautiful. Every frame is literally like a painting. This movie is like, it's called Portrait. Um, and I love it. It's absolutely stunning to look at. And if you have at all taken French, or are going to you just use it as an excuse to watch this movie because i mean you shouldn't need an excuse like this should be reason enough but just go watch it you'll float too 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 Okay, 
Okay, let's get freaky. Alright, number five, horror movies. Definitely goes to Jordan Peele's Us. Overall, the movie is kind of mixed, but up until the point where they really start to explain away all the supernatural things that are happening, the movie was something else. Like, really. Some of the greatest horror scenes I have seen in a long, long time, maybe ever. Honestly, the plot holes only start to come up when they really try to explain away uh, all the people in red outfits. So, all the doppelgangers. Up until then, the movie is great. Uh, definitely go watch it. Uh, Lupita Nyong'o is insanely amazing as both Adelaide and Red. At number four, we have The Lighthouse. Robert Eggers' follow-up to The Witch, which I uh, still have not seen all of it. I, I, I can't put myself through it. But this movie is the most interesting, the most different, the most original movie that you'll watch this year without a doubt. Like in 4x3 aspect ratio, black and white, with amazing cinematography. Uh, I mean, only bested by 1917, and that movie was like all one shot, so you know, don't worry about it. Amazing cinematography, and just held up by Robert Pattinson and Willem Dafoe. I really think Robert Pattinson deserved some sort of best actor for that mo this movie. And Willem Dafoe definitely for Best Supporting Actor. They are both amazing and, and it's like criminally underrated. So definitely go check this out. It's, it's like a pretty short movie as well. So you can knock it out very quickly. At number three, we have Stephen King's Doctor Sleep. Directed by Haunting of Hill House director Mike Flanagan. It's also written and I think edited by him as well. He's really good at doing like everything and that just means like his vision is like what you get when you watch the movie. And when I watched it, I fell in love. I, I got to see this movie uh, early on October 30th, about two weeks before the movie actually came out. And man, if you love Stanley Kubrick's The Shining, I think it's funny that this is called Stephen King's Doctor Sleep after he didn't like The Shining famously, but man, this movie is amazing. It's a very different story than The Shining, but it definitely ties in and pays homage to it in really, really clever ways. Definitely don't miss this one. If you haven't seen it, just, what are you doing? Go watch it. It's awesome. And at number two, we have a small movie called The Nightingale. And honestly, I want to make an entire video on this movie itself because I really think it it is so amazing. There's nothing I can't say about this movie. The cinematography, writing, acting, everything is amazing. But honestly, it's just how this transports you to this world in the 1800s where she was just not having a good time and this is an amazing revenge tale that makes you feel extremely happy and uplifted at times but also extremely sick to your stomach and like sick deep in your bones at the same time and if it can feel make you feel a roller coaster of emotions like that then filmmakers have done their job really well Definitely go check this out. It's one of the best movies and barely anybody has seen it. You can rent it on any streaming platform. Really, really well done. And definitely something you probably have not seen. And finally, the best horror movie of the year was definitely Midsommar. And if you have a option of going to see the director's cut or this one or the theatrical cut watch the director's cut it's about 20 minutes longer but it adds some really really crucial things that just completely flesh out the characters and deepen all of the relationships in between them it, th this is an epic like i thought hereditary was good but midsommar if you watch the director's cut you will understand how 
amazing of a filmmaker Ari Aster really is. So that's it for horror. It's been a really good year for horror and got more more to come next year. Uh, Halloween sequel, The Lodge, lots of things to look forward to. All right, I'm going to come out and say it. Best war movie of the year was 1917. It's pretty much the only war movie we saw other than, uh, I think, The Last Full Measure, which I haven't seen. I think it just came out. Uh, Best war movie, 1917. Without a doubt, cinematography was amazing. The score is really something special, and I honestly think that Joker has been stealing all the score awards, and Joker's score is awesome too, but 1917 score was amazing. This movie was a visual spectacle, like audio-visual spectacle to the nth degree. Really amazing stuff. Uh, I truly wish I could have seen it in like a Dolby theater. That would have been the most amazing experience of my life or something like that, right? Definitely go see this if you haven't. Uh, see it in the biggest theater, biggest screen that you can, or try to go for the best sounding theater that you can. Either way, you are definitely in for a treat. And one thing I have to say is it looks like this movie might win Best Picture. Um, I don't think it should. Um, it won the Best Drama at the Golden Globes, but honestly, I don't consider this movie like a Best Drama. It, it can certainly sweep all of the technical awards because technically it's amazing, but it doesn't. It just doesn't have like the story and doesn't have the real movie-like quality that most of these movies really had in terms of a story and characters. Uh, it's just like these two guys through the thing, and it's not deep enough in that regard, substance-wise, to warrant, like, a best picture. Look, I'm not saying it's easy. I'm not saying you don't gotta think on your feet. Bend a few rules, maybe. But it's worth it. As long as you get the results. That's a lot of blood. That is a lot. That's a lot of blood. We're losing him. Go! Hurry up! Don't go anywhere. Don't stay with me. Stay with me. Well, now that we've got that out of the way, let's go talk about the comedies. At number five, we have Dolomite is my name. Eddie Murphy is back, and he's doing more movies. I think he's doing another Beverly Hills Cop. Uh, for Netflix and it's gonna be great uh, this movie is so good like if you watch Better Call Saul you know that Saul's not the greatest guy he's not doing the best things but yet you still root for him because of how hard he works same thing goes for Dolomite I mean he's a good guy but he's just not having the best of luck and you just see him work his ass off and it is extremely extremely engaging really well made really heartfelt really uplifting and just very affirming and i can't say enough good things about this movie this movie just makes you feel good at the end and and makes you really root for rudy ray moore and i mean if you can't root for your main character like <laughs> the movie has failed and this movie passes with flying colors. Definitely go see Dolomite. At number four, we have Booksmart, Olivia Wilde's directorial debut, starring Jonah Hill's sister, and she was also in Lady Bird, and uh, Caitlin Dever from the amazing Netflix show Unbelievable. Both of these people are just amazing in this movie. It's, it's another movie like Shazam that you really feel these characters. While the other side characters are definitely just exaggerated stereotypes, it definitely is not the case for our main leads because you are with them every step of the way and you're rooting for them and it's so funny. Absolutely hilarious. I was busting a literal gut watching this movie. Um, so definitely check it out. It's definitely the super bad of this generation. Go watch it. Go laugh your ass off. Have a good time. At number three, we have Aquafina in The Farewell. Uh, I think that The Farewell is a movie that is not going to get seen. Like, people just aren't going to see this movie, and I feel like that's terrible. 
because it's an amazing movie and it's one of those movies most of these movies feel like movies but this movie feels like a movie like ford v ferrari like this movie feels real and it, it's it never breaks verisimilitude and i think that's awesome it's extremely funny extremely heartfelt uh and it opens your eyes to a different culture and i always think that's really great because a lot of times you we just get like very americanized hollywood formula hollywood versions of a certain thing um something that's marketed towards a mass audience and this movie is it has that same feeling of like a massive movie but it's set in a chinese town and with chinese characters it really opens your eyes up to another side of the world i don't think that you've seen a movie like this it's extremely funny it's extremely real realistic you don't have to suspend your disbelief at all and it's really emotional too and there's so many things about this movie that make it great and also i feel really bad that it's just not getting the attention that it deserves so go watch the farewell if you can um you can watch all a24 movies on canopy for free so definitely go check it out the number two spot definitely goes to my boy quentin tarantino's ninth film once upon a time in hollywood i was decently underwhelmed by this movie when i went to go see it because honestly i wanted something more like django unchained and inglorious bastards but i ended up getting well not that so i was uh kind of unhappy but it's a very very funny movie very fun movie and with really great characters and everything is really well done in this movie i it just didn't live up to the hype or potential or i honestly i didn't feel like it had the same emotional impact that i expected from a tarantino movie it didn't hook me in like i wanted it to that being said i definitely do think brad pitt will win best supporting actor for this he is amazing so is leonardo dicaprio and the number one spot for comedies goes to the murder mystery movie knives out this movie was a hoot i went to go see this with my parents on a thursday night opening um it was an early screening and i was extremely surprised to see that the movie theater was pretty much packed and that that's pretty rare for a thursday night it was ryan johnson and i guess people were like hey he made star wars and i like star wars so i'll go see this or also i mean the movie looked great and i went to go see it and it's awesome like the entire theater was just laughing their asses off just non-stop this movie is extremely extremely clever the writing is so layered it's it's like an onion there's so many layers you just peel it and peel it and peel it and there's one more layer uh amazing uh i really do think that this should win the best original screenplay if not it'll probably go to like quentin tarantino or something okay now that the comedies are done it's time to get serious these are my top five for the best drama slash biopic movies of 2019 at number five, we have Joker. Joaquin Phoenix, you should win Best Actor for this. I really hope it's you. Otherwise, I could definitely see either Adam Driver or Antonio Banderas in a upset that was like, it, it'll be talked about as the biggest snub ever for like 20 years to come or whatever, you know? Um, this movie is awesome. Cinematography score is great and you really feel for this guy Arthur because of, again, Joaquin's incredible performance and the movie doesn't work without him and like, he carries the entire thing. Nothing more to say, you've probably already seen Joker or if you haven't, definitely watch it. You are gonna miss out on something special. That's why. The number four spot, we have Marriage Story written and directed by noah bombach just this movie definitely broke me 
It's one of those movies that makes it so hard to root for either character because you wrote you root for both of them. You you want both of them to get what they want and you understand both of their points of view and just hard and it, I feel like I haven't been through a divorce myself, but I feel like watching this movie, I would never want to go through anything like that. Um, or put anyone through something like that. So, props. Major props. It does. This is another movie that feels like a movie. But even with that, it feels completely real and lifelike. Like, these are just like the lives of two people that we're watching play through. So, you know, incredible filmmaking. Definitely go see this movie. And it's on Netflix. Netflix Originals. Yay. Alrighty. At number three, we have Loose, starring Kelvin Harrison Jr. from Waves and It Comes at Night. Uh, this movie... This movie's great. Have you ever had that... Have you ever had that one high school teacher that just wouldn't leave you alone, always gave you crap, and always found your things bad, or like always found some way to put you down, or anything like that? And have you ever wanted to exact revenge on this teacher? Well, this is a movie like that. Almost exactly like that, but it's a psychological thriller set in high school. This is like 13 Reasons Why, directed by David Fincher. But like focused on one character, and it's actually like interesting and not extremely unrealistic at all. Uh, super great, super, super tense, and very searing in terms of how it looks at us as a society and how we look at people. Got some really good stuff in this movie. And it does so much with uh, so little, too, that I think it's brilliant. And in the number two spot, we have... A foreign film by the name of Parasite. You might have heard of it. This movie is a masterpiece. Like straight up like Portrait of a Lady on Fire, a masterpiece. Another movie if you haven't seen it, I think it's also Korean, it's called The Handmaiden. It's available to stream on Amazon Prime. Another amazing, amazing movie. Uh, not directed by Bong Joon-ho, but I've seen the other things Bong Joon-ho has done. Okja and Snowpiercer I thought were all really good um, and this one took it to another level like three whole levels above either of those movies this movie is tense it's funny it's ah, it's everything this movie I, I when I heard it described as something that changes what genre it's in like every 20 minutes and it doesn't do it that frequently but it definitely becomes different kinds of movies as the plot progresses. Uh, really, really inventive stuff, really just crazy things go on in this movie. And I think it's great. And it also has a really, really good look at, you know, like Joker, um, classism. So that's another thing. You got your political commentary with your amazing movie. Two birds with one stone. And number one on this list in my personal choice for best picture is Matt Damon and Christian Bale's new car movie called Ford vs. Ferrari. This movie's great. Like, absolutely great. By far the best movie I've seen all of the year. And it's one of those movies that if you start watching it at any point, you're just going to be sucked in and want to watch all the way through. Like it sinks its hooks into you. Absolutely amazing, incredibly funny, incredibly heartfelt. You really feel for these characters and you care about them, you want them to win and it's extremely, like it's a feel good movie and I don't think there's anything wrong about that. All around top notch movie and it feels like a movie that would have come out 20 years ago. Like a good old fashioned meat and potatoes movie. That's what this movie feels like. Even though I do think Ford vs. Ferrari should win Best Picture, I honestly think, even though 1917 is slated to win because it's been sweeping all of the other awards ceremonies, I think that if a film comes into the Oscars in the lead, like it did La La Land a few years ago, it won't win the Best Picture award. 
nothing against 1917. I also don't think it's best picture worthy. I think Ford vs. Ferrari, Parasite, maybe Marriage Story, or even Little Women, honestly. They're more conducive to a best picture, like an overall amazing movie, um, as opposed to like 1917 was like amazing in certain aspects. And I found it really lacking in terms of story and character development, which is understandable because of the nature of the film, but also like that's just the nature of the film. It's not like Ford vs. Ferrari was a really engaging movie, but just had terrible characters. No, it had amazing characters, it was also really engaging. I don't know how engaging 1917 would have been if it wasn't all in one shot, and it might have been something that we would have forgotten about. Uh, these are all things to think about. I do, in fact, think that either Ford v Ferrari or Parasite will win the top award. If it was an upset, maybe Little Women. Little Women's also definitely a good pick for the award. So yeah. Those are my thoughts. I hope you like this new ranking system I've come up with. It's definitely a lot more personalized to each genre, gives a lot more movies time to shine and lets people narrow their picks down. I'm gonna keep doing this, but until next time, let's watch the Oscars and see how correct I was with any of my assumptions or guesses. Uh, I know I'll be watching them. And until next time, I'm Sadu, and thank you for joining me in the screening room.